Hi, are you ever tempted to run ahead of God, to create your own agenda, to create your own plan, and to work that plan completely apart from what God might have planned for your life? It's an easy thing for us to do. We're human beings. We have a strong will of our own. We think we have things figured out. And so if it sounds right to us, we'll run with the plan without really ever consulting the Lord. It's a wonderful story in the book of Genesis. It's kind of a tragic story as well. And that is the story of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah had tried having a child for many, many years. In fact, now they were very aged. And uh, uh, so in the story in Genesis 16, verse 2, it says, So Sarah said to Abraham, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abraham agreed with Sarah's proposal. By the time Ishmael came along, that is the, um, uh, the, the, the child that Abraham had by his servant Hagar, Abraham had turned 86 years old. Now, if we skip ahead to read about the birth of Isaac, the true son of Abraham's covenant with God, the one that God had promised to Abraham, we'll see Abraham was, was 100 years old by the time that that child uh, came along. Abraham and Sarah tried to rush God, tried to do things on their own timetable, tried to create their own, um, their own plan and their own agenda. But they didn't receive their blessing or for, for another 14 long years. They had to wait for Isaac to be conceived, to come along. What have you had to wait for? What are some of the times that you've had to wait for something and it just seemed to be impossible to wait it out? The right job, perhaps? You didn't like the job you had and you had applied for a different one and that one didn't pan out, and so you continue to wait, continue to try to find the right job. Maybe the right spouse. You kept looking and looking, and God just did not bring anybody your, your direction. Maybe you had to wait on a, on a baby like Abraham and Sarah had to wait on their child. What are some ways you tried to run ahead of God? Where you got the ball rolling? And more than that, you get the ball rolling in a direction that you can control. You can set the direction and you can roll the ball where you want it to be. Now, I know plenty of pastors who work off of all kinds of formulas, um, church success books that they'll read about if you do this, this, and this, you'll have a successful church. And they do this, they read this, and they make their plans and they work their plans in order to create an effective church. You know what? The Apostle Paul never did that. He never spoke of those models of, or instructed us about certain models of, if you do this and this, then you'll have a great successful church. If you go out and if you, you advertise more, you'll have a successful church. If you live by a certain motto, you'll have a successful church. No, it's usually... Paul telling us to pray, to be in prayer. Have you ever tried to run ahead of God and you found out that you seem to be running against the wind? It's a song by Bob Seeger back in the 1970s, a song that I like in a, a lot. And one, some of the lines in there is, running against the wind, I'm still running against the wind. I'm older now but still running against the wind. The first chorus was, I'm young. we were younger then and running against the wind. And the gist of the story is, the song is, no matter how old we got, we we're still trying to achieve stuff on our own way and running against the wind and constantly running into objects that prevent us from doing what we want to do. He seems to be saying in that song that running against the wind is, is kind of a habit that we quite often never get over. Aren't we like that? We're always charging ahead, always making our own plans, charging ahead of God and never quite learning that it's futile and 
that run, all we're do, really doing is running against the wind. Our running ahead doesn't pressure God to hurry his agenda along any more than what he's already doing. When we try to coerce the Lord into giving us what we want, and when we want it, he responds in effect this way. He says, you're not ready for it. This blessing isn't good for you right now. You have so much more to learn. So trust me and don't expect me to explain myself. You'll understand it later on. You might find yourself in Abraham's predicament right now. And you're, you're praying that great American prayer that so many people pray. Lord, hurry up. Get it done. You want answers now. You want his blessings now. And you're not inclined to wait. You're convinced that you've waited long enough. And waiting is very difficult for us. And you want progress. And so your great temptation, when the Lord doesn't appear to be doing everything on your time schedule, your predicament has dragged on for too long and you're tired of it. You're tired of waiting. Now, if that describes you, and if it doesn't now, I'm guessing it will very soon because it seems to be the human experience. I have a four-letter word for you. And that is the word wait. Wait upon the Lord. When we're forced to wait, the Lord helps us acquire the appetite for the blessing that is to come. Meanwhile, he builds our maturity so that when the fulfillment finally arrives, we're prepared to enjoy his blessings to the fullest. May God bless you. May God give you the strength and encouragement. Amen.